Well, I'm, I'm here with Blothar the Berserker, and for this week's very special Christmas interview, we have on our virtual couch from the surprisingly, surprisingly, I'm not, I guess it's not that surprising because it's a great show, but it's a very popular internet talk show from the show Two Minutes to Late Night. We have with us Guarcinio Hall. Scum dogs, how we doing? Hey, Guarcinio. Thanks for coming on. You know, I didn't, uh, you didn't, you get, didn't give me a choice. You're very threatening, uh, fellas. Yeah, we, we sent a few guys with spears and knives to make sure you showed up on time. It's good to see they did their job. They did, uh, under the makeup, a lot of blood. <laughs> good to hear. Well, thank you very much for being on our very special Christmas, ep I mean, our holiday episode, because as we all know, after the four years of peace, the war on Christmas is back on, and I, for one, can't wait to get my hands bloody and some elf guts, but which side of the war are you on? Well, you know, uh, I don't, I feel like it's hard for me to have an opinion on this because I'm, I don't celebrate Christmas. I am Hebrewberry, uh, and so we celebrate Frankensteinica. Frankensteinica. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we it's the we just celebrate the eight days that Frankenstein lived in Bayside, Queens. Oh yeah, we do that too. Yeah. Yeah, we're very familiar with Frankensteinica. Oh. Yeah, we have a few of our own traditions that we we like to observe during this holy time. Yeah, lots of them. That's right. Yeah. Oh, what well, are your traditions? One of the main things we do is we uh, take a few random humans, we dunk them in oil, strap them to a torture rack, and light one on fire every night for eight nights in a row. That's a... Oh! oh. Manguara. <laughs> a manguara, of course. Yeah. You have to. And then we, uh, we also have Golly the Flesh Gollum. Oh, he's yeah. He's one of our... Yeah, he's, he's basically... He rewards bad children by kidnapping their goody two-shoes brothers and sisters and forcing them... You know, the, it, 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 well, basically, he just forces them to work and stuff like that. Uh, and he also forces them to create dreidels by just taking little pinches of his own flesh. And he screams, ah, that hurts. And they make a dreidel out of the clay of the golem's body. Yes. That uh, explains uh, what happened to my two older brothers. Yes. Have they ever participated in the poop sack race competition, which is part of our celebration here? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's, where, it's where you crab walk. And you try to lay the biggest, the longest continuous turd. Yeah. You've won that uh, four years in a row now, haven't you, Lothar? Oh, that's great. Yeah, we we do that. Uh, we we do that every year. My aunts always win because they have um, they have an onion allergy, and uh, you know that's just how it, that's just how it is. Uh, and then after that, we usually just watch Abbott and Costello meet the Wolfman. Frankenstein a tradition. Can't beat it. Yeah, we always just eat Chinese food. <laughs> we do, yeah. It's a uh, you order you order Chinese takeout and then you dunk some bats in applesauce. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's a wonderful time of the year. It is. What? Are you, so are you guys? Are you guys very? Are you guys anti Christmas because of your love of Frankensteinica? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I if every time I see a Santa ringing that damn bell in front of the store, I have to kick him. Yeah. <laughs> kick the Santa with his bell. I don't know. I mean, Hit him in the balls know. with the bell. Yeah, yeah. We're not anti-Christmas as much as we are. We're just anti-happiness, you know. Yeah. Of course. Pretty much. We're on all holidays. Yeah. They Every... Mm. Hate the bunny. Yeah. I, I, don't, I agree. So the... So you guys only celebrate Frankensteinica and then probably Passover because that's a very depressing holiday. Oh yeah, but, but the blood is really involved in our celebration. Absolutely, yeah. Blood on the whole house, not just the front door. Um, and you're not you're dun you're dunking the herb in actual tears. Yeah, and nobody's getting passed over. That's the. <laughs> Everybody's getting hit right that's in right. the noggin. Yeah. You love to see it. <laughs> well, speaking of of your, I'm sorry, your Hebrew brew, what? Hebrew berry, Hebrew berry, Brewberry traditions. Um, I saw that your little your little brother, Cannibal Corey, 
had his his bar his guar mitzvah. Uh, that, that was. I was actually, to be honest, I'm a little hurt. I mean, we weren't invited. How can you have a guar mitzvah without inviting guar? Well, you know, it's a, uh, it's a. Good, we would have loved to invite you, but you know, it's a very, uh, it's an intimate event, and we just didn't have enough chairs. We don't use chairs. You think we can sit with legs like mine? Come on. Yeah, we don't sit. Yeah, and he's he's part cow. Everybody knows that cows sleep standing up. Yeah. So, in other words, you just didn't include us in your freaking guar mitzvah for Cannibal Corey, which is fine. And what, what, what's with this guar as part of any word that you want, by the way? Yeah, we're, we're not the Smurfs. You can't just say, oh, I'm feeling guary today. <laughs> oh, Papa Gore, Papa Gore. I just got gored in the guar by a guar. Doesn't work that way. It can. Listen, in uh, in the late night business, it's all puns, and uh, you guys have a one syllable word. It works really well. But also, you know what? I'm sorry we didn't invite you. We should have looked at the seating chart. You are part cow. We could have probably just put some of my relatives on on your haunches. Yeah, yeah. I that'd be fine with me. But yeah, you. So you don't. Uh, yeah, you're not, you guys aren't a pun-based band. You're just, you're up front. Yeah, there's no humor. No humor of any sort. Puns or, well, that's pretty much the only form of humor or I can funds. think of. funs, yeah. Just no fun. Yeah, no fun. No funs, no puns. Yeah. We're very serious. We, yeah, we have, uh, we, we have, uh, I mean, this is probably, this is probably why I got a lawsuit, because we have, we had so many, Guar puns, especially on our first, our, our first go around, the pilot, first season, we abused that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I gotta admit, I loved the first season. I thought it was absolutely amazing. But uh, I, I don't know what happened. I think my internet provider stopped carrying your show. I mean, where can I watch <laughs> two and three? Are they on HBO Max or Hulu Plus? Uh, where, where, where are seasons two and three? I, I gotta catch up. We got a, you know, we made the first season with, uh, with other people's money. And then when people realized that we uh, used their money for that, they were like, no more. So we're figuring it out. Right now it's, uh, it's, it's you know, we can't, we can't go to Vitus uh, at, the to at the time since uh, everybody's uh, been passing around uh, like the mega bat flu and taking very bad care of themselves, which you love to see. You love to see people taking bad care of but I can't make my show, so that's a bummer. Yes. Are you going to go back to St. Vitus, that famous metal bar in Brooklyn, as soon as, you know, it's when everybody gets their, their vaccines and their Bill Gates implants. You plan on filming, having more episodes? The thing, at, you know, the we going back to St. Vitus isn't really the problem right now. If you have been a regular at St. Vitus, you're probably immune to most everything because it's the grossest place on earth. That basement, yeah. just mm, horrifying. If it drips, it's, uh, it's, it's, you, you got most STDs and, uh, I don't know. It's, so that's not what's really keeping us. It's, it's, it's more of a, the show is really hard to make. It's hard to make uh, a metal talk show when, uh, we don't have a lot of money. And our show films, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're filming in a music venue and all of the, the guests are musicians. So it's really hard to fight. To, like, at, we have a lot of people who have been interested in doing the show, but it's hard to be like, hey, are you in Brooklyn on this day from 7 to 11 and not playing your own show? That's usually the hardest part. And so money would help that part. So I think the the plan is we want to do more seasons, but we gotta we gotta we gotta get just like a rich Republican guy's money yeah. to fund the whole thing. Cause you know how they love metal and you, rich Republicans. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> they love people, and they love uh, yeah. No, I mean, I. <sighs> I mean, it's it's helping that these that the covers have blown up a little bit because they can see that they can hope maybe they can try to sell something through us. The covers are a good idea. 
Yeah, I, that makes me think that maybe you had something to do with this whole pandemic because, you know, now you get to, like, you're, you've taken the time off the, like, you've taken the lemons that 2020 has sent you and you've really made a lot of lemonade. You've had some incredible talent come and um, do collaborations with you, actually. Well, actually, talent that's way above your pay grade. Um, oh, don't impressive. I know. How, how do you get these people to come and do play these covers with you? Are they really that bored from not touring this year? It's got to be boredom. It's not the it's not the funds. It's not the fame. We only you know the show is still growing. I think I think people are interested in being a part of the covers because it's 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 a way to be creative, but without actually having to write an entire fucking album. Uh, uh. I, it's like. It, it, you know, I, I feel like there is, there's pressure on musicians right now to feel like they have to, uh, like, create. And it's hard to feel like you want to create uh, something when it feels like everybody's kind of going through a very similar experience. It's like, how do you have a new perspective on that? But here it's just like, hey, do you want to do you want to play on a very loud Olivia Newton-John song? It's easier. Yeah, you've done it. You've done some good work with that. I gotta say, and you know, I look, I look between you and me. I love the show. I love, I love what I've seen. I love, and the bedroom covers are fantastic. You got Max Weinberg to play drums on a Misfits cover. That's pretty. Neat. We did. Listen, I, there's nothing I love more than taking credit for other people's ideas. You know this, um, but this is a. Uh, this was all due to uh, to Jay, his son. This was the Misfits cover was Jay Weinberg's idea. Uh, of course, we wanted to work with Max. We're a late night talk show. We love we love Conan. Conan taught me you could be a pain in the ass on television, and sometimes they won't fire you. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, after we we worked with Jay, uh, we did a, a Bruce Springsteen cover, and then it kind of came back around. Uh, a dream to have Max Weinberg on a hardcore song. He he said, I can get my dad to do it. And I was like, I don't believe you. And then he proved <laughs> me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Fleetwood Mac. How'd that one come together? Fleetwood Mac, you know, I I feel like everybody... The, here's the thing. With our, with our covers, we're very strategic about the songs that we do. We're trying to pick... I feel like a million people have covered Fleetwood Mac, and it wasn't really something I wanted to touch, because if I hear another goddamn cover of The Chain, I'm gonna pass over, curse everybody. I'm, I'm sick of that. I'm sick, here's the thing, The Chain I love, but now, like, with the internet, <laughs> I'm sick of The Chain, I can't, listen, I love the Cranberry Skateboard guy, I can't hear Dreams ever again. I'm done, it's, 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 uh, it's been beat. It's beaten deader than most horses that I've met, and I just uh, so we wanted to pick a song that wasn't normally covered by Fleetwood Mac. And Christine McVie, she gets left in the dust a lot. It's usually always about uh, Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Stevie, 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 and Lindsay, um, who they fired in their set. That band is in their 70s. If you're a band and you're in your 70s, you can't be firing every, anybody. Yeah. As far as I'm mean, concerned, Fleetwood Mac, they broke up, right? And they're still sleeping together. It's gross. They're all <laughs> Absolutely. It's all part of the divorce process. You know how uh, people get divorced and then they, they just like hate fuck for the next six months? Uh, it's part of the grieving. Talk about being, that's worse than catching your parents, just knowing that Fleetwood Mac is fucking... <laughs> yeah, but we wanted to do a Christine McVie song, and uh, Lu jo Johanna from Lucifer has just the perfect range for Christine McVie, so it was really, she inspired me to want to put that cover together, and it kind of grew from, like, uh, Bill from Macedon, huge Fleetwood Mac fan, and I think then we used uh, Bill's name to get everybody else involved, like Marty Friedman. Right. What the hell is that? Some kind of an emergency going on over here. <laughs> an emergency? Did you cause it? What did <laughs> no. you do? It must have been the uh, poop sack race from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Call the fire department! <laughs> <laughs>
What's going? Why haven't you asked us to do a song? Come on now. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, here I would love to. It makes the most sense, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think they have guitar centers in Antarctica. Well, it's it's Christmas time. Well, it, yeah, it's holiday season. No Christmas. Down with Christmas. Let's do a damn Christmas song. You and us. Okay. Well, here's the deal. I've already, I've already done a Christmas. Like we did a King Diamond Christmas song for Halloween. We thought it would be funny because we're pains in the asses. Uh, it is funny. I think it's great. Also, that's that's Christmas aside. That song fucking kicks ass. No presents for Christmas by King Diamond is a treasure. Um, but I think why don't we uh, why don't we swerve everybody? Do you guys think? Do you, are you guys up for transforming something unexpected? Do you guys like to mutate? Oh yes. That's what mutation is. One of our strong points. Yes, okay. definitely. Absolutely. It looks like you guys have black belts in mutating, I'm going to be honest. We're good at mutating. Okay, well let's, uh... Are you guys Elton John people? Oh! You know it! That's a friggin' you know Louie. The Rocket Man! Let's do it. Let's do, uh... Let's do Step Into Christmas. Let's see what we can oh. bring to that. Are you kidding me? Of course! We're in! We're in! We're doing it. Step Into Christmas. Let's do it. Ah, I'm feeling stabby. Let's do this. Absolutely. I think it's, let's put it together. It'll come out. I, who cares? What, it's it's going to come out by Christmas. Let's get it out for Christmas. Christmas is only like four days away. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Start right now. Man. There is one thing that's bothering me. What's up? I don't have any kisses. No kisses. If I'm not I mistaken, wait, yeah, you may not know what we're talking about, but our lawyer told us that we sued you. Oh, right, you did sue me, yeah. I wish I could talk more about that, but I'm still in a lawsuit with Arsenio Hall, Kids in the Hall, the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's a long list, it's getting complicated, but you're right, your lawyer, Subpoenas Maximus, did say that I owe him 500 kisses. Um, I, di I didn't read the fine print. I owe everyone in the Banguar 500 kisses. So pucker up, baby. <laughs> Season two of Two Minutes to Late Night ain't the only thing that is coming back after the vaccine comes out. <laughs> All right, I'll, we are gonna hold you to that. Absolutely, you're not just getting not just getting a micro trip. You, you're getting more. One. 500 deep tongue French kisses. Absolutely. 100%. It's gonna be, it just, the tongues are gonna be spiraling. It's gonna be like a Tim Burton movie. They're gonna oh, yeah. sell the picture of that at Hot Topic. <laughs> how are you, well, how are, how are you guys doing? Are you guys able to go back to space anytime soon? Ah. <sighs> We've, we've been trying to go back to space our entire career here on Earth, and... Yeah, man, it's, you know, it's just... It's like one very, very long episode of Gilligan's Island. Right, of course. Just a bunch of... Just coconut bras and disappointment. <laughs> of course. I was wondering... I, I, I was wondering that. I was like, I don't think they're going to let bureaucracy get in the way of what they need to do. No. But. It's a complicated world out there. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like we're kind of on the wrong side of the desk because you're the professional interviewer and we're, we're kind of new to this. You got anything, any other questions for us? Yeah, absolutely. So how, how like, you guys, have, been, have you just been doing this show? Or, like, are, are you guys, like, do you... What do you got? How are you? How do you guys feel about live streaming performances? I'm curious. Are you guys have done some? Like I and after doing them, how are you feeling about how they're gonna evolve? What do you want to see besides uh, more disemboweling and genitals flying? Right. 
Well, I mean, it's always a pleasure to perform without an audience, which is something that we're no, <laughs> you know, and we've certainly done our share of that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, 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 I enjoyed the live stream uh, only because uh, it, it was an opportunity to do another Gua show. And, this, you know, let's face it, this is boring as shit. 2020 has just been one big snooze fest. You know, yeah. As, yeah, as much as I dislike the other guys in the band, and, you know, I, I, at first I, it was great. I didn't have to see anybody. Well, fine. But now, you know, sooner or later, you got to come outside of your toilet paper fort, you know, buck up and get some hand sanitizer for yourself, and play huh? some rock and roll. I get it. I, uh, you know, I, I, I'm curious about, about it. Do you think, uh, cause I've talked with you guys, you guys are just big monsters. It's really fun. But for like a regular band, I feel like a lot of people are struggling to, to, to see the point in putting on like more than one virtual show. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. right. That's because that's because that's the whole reason Guar exists is because all other bands are fucking boring. They're ridiculously boring. Right. And this just exposes how ridiculously boring they truly are. <laughs> Got him. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Sleepy time tea, man. I mean, we enjoyed doing the drive-in show. That was pretty fun. You know. Yeah, we we did a show where the audience drove into a into a baseball diamond and stayed in their cars. We tried to spew on their cars. Did you have to, did you, how did you kill people in their cars? Well, we, uh, we hit all the stop signs. And so that on the way in, they just ran into each other and all died in a big massive pile. It was, <laughs> I mean, it was really stupid, you know, but the cars, I mean, at least they were better looking than people, you know? There's some, you know, <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Have you seen a Honda Accord? Handsome as hell. That's right. Really nice exhaust system on that one, if you know what I mean. For sure. I put a banana in that tailpipe. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. That's actually how I thought you killed all the people at your show, is you just put bananas in their tailpipes. Oh, that's really gross. Why are you so gross? Does your mother watch this show? Yeah, it's great. Doesn't she think Frankenstein? That's what my mother said when she saw Guar, is, why does it have to be so nasty? <laughs> my mom actually does do that. I don't think my mom understands what I'm doing at all. I think she, I think she first saw the show and then also assumed it was the show Baskets. It was Zach's <laughs> Calvin Atkins. <laughs> Are you the one who has Louis Anderson for a mom? Is that you? <laughs> I just finished that show, though, by the way, and Louis Anderson is a revelation. Oh, man. Beautiful. This is the greatest thing ever. It's real. It's, it's amazing. Like, it's genuinely funny, but by the end of the show, I have, I was so emotionally invested. I was so happy that the show just became about Louis Anderson falling in love. Uh, I've never wanted a marriage to work out ever, except for this show. <laughs> So good. Are you guys going to make an album in the quarantine? Are you going to do that? Yeah. Yes, we've, we've been writing. We've had nothing else to do. Um, it's just the matter of actually putting it down on the wax, as they say. Uh, yeah. do, do people say that? I don't know. I, I just said it. I don't know if they say it anymore. I don't know. I, they, they have not said that since 1969. Nice. <laughs> uh, but Edison Cylinders. We were <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gramophone. Hell yeah. yeah. We're doing, I mean, yeah, of course. We're working on, we're working on tunes, you know. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. I mean, we're, we're, when we can, we get together and, and write some music. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of film work, a lot of this kind of stuff. I actually think that, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's just like with your bedroom cover situation. I think that, you know, for creative people, it's forced creative people to do more and different creative things. So, uh, in some ways, it's a, it's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing sometimes. Well, happy you're all dying, humans. It's good for us. 
if everyone wasn't sad and bored, we wouldn't have. It is so, the, the reality is uh, I love succeeding in an apocalypse. Of course, that's the dream, but this is the most dog shit. People, really people are talking about how like the system's coming down. I'm like, if this is how the system comes down, if this is yeah. how it all fucking happens, that's so fucking lame. There's no yeah. fire or any, like. Yeah. Worst coup ever. A bo a, a, an apathetic coup. Yeah, it's boring. If it, so it does feel, it feels weird that the show has gotten noticed from, uh, from just, uh, from just happenstance and necessity. But I'm trying to be optimistic about it. We're gonna, we, we got, we have a lot of new stuff Planned. I feel like a lot of people are wondering why we haven't done like like you guys like a zoom talk show and I think for us like you guys didn't have a zoom talk show before this so you could just you could just make you this is new but for us it would be like the energy would be different it's hard to get mutoid man doing like guitar cues and little sounds uh and rim shots or whatever and rim jobs and such so i think we are trying to figure out uh we're trying to figure out a cost effective way to do a do something in that that is two minutes to late night related that is comedy related that uh we would want that we're gonna want to do even outside of the the quarantine even if we're back at saint vitus we want to make something that we'd also additionally want to make. I hope that makes sense a little bit. Yeah, and that's really the strength of the show when you watch it, the, the two minutes to late night show. Is, is, it's a good late night show. It runs smoothly, you've got... The it does not run smoothly. <laughs> oh my God. The, everyone it's in the... Watch. It's a smooth watching experience. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad someone is having fun. It's, I've, I'm never... I'm so stressed out. My fucking house band are such pains in the ass. Oh yeah. My side. Well, you always are. They suck as people. They suck as people. They're great. They're awful, awful people. Without exception. I'll say that you're an awful, awful person. <laughs> yeah, once you pick up a guitar, you submit yourself as an asshole forever. That's right. Yeah. Especially guitar players. Oh, the worst. Yeah, lead singer. Who, who the fuck? Who the fuck? Everybody loves a lead singer. Listen, I got a, I got a hand in both of these soups, and I can definitely say that if you're a guitar, you have to have such a fucking ego to be a guitar player nowadays. Because if you go to guitar and you thinking that you can do something else that's, that hasn't been done already, yeah. to think that you have something to add to this bullshit, mm. Right. That's why I like bass guitar, because it's an apologetic instrument. It's an instrument. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's already embarrassed. <laughs> it's it's, it's self-deprecation, the right. instrument, for sure. Yes. That being said, uh, please check out Dunnable Guitars. <laughs> they're, they're, they're honestly... Uh, they, if you don't know about Donnable Guitars, they are, you can see them all over our show. You can see them in most upcoming metal bands. Uh, most, like, if, if you are a Russian Circles fan or a, or a, a, a Chemist fan, Spirit Adrift, uh, Gate Creeper, all of these bands. Think, yeah, no, none of those ring a bell. Well, yeah, absolutely. You, I mean, not any, not anymore they don't, but... <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they, they're all playing Dunnable guitars. They are, like, uh, like the perfect Gibson for heavy metal guitar player playing. Just a dark tone with clarity, tons of ease. Uh, better than whatever bullshit Ballsack is playing. Hey. Oh no! Oh! Ballsack, Ballsack plays his own signature model. What, what is it there, Ballsack? Hey, it's not. Sector. Go get it. Go get it. Go get that. I'm going to go get mine. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. You guys go get them. I'm just going to sit here and touch myself. <laughs> I've got my team. Oh, yeah. Whip oh, your. 
Okay. What do you got? You got a Schecter uh, uh, Doom level? Yeah, look at that, man. It's a, it's a signature ball sack guitar. It just looks like exactly like his outfit there. <laughs> Does it have little teeth? Yeah. It's got spikes. It's got teeth. It's got blades that come out. Oh, You'll no. love to see it. He's frozen. Oh, no, he's frozen. This is a disaster. It's frozen. It's me. I... <laughs> Yeah, I get, well, look, it's a beautiful guitar, ball sack. I love that it looks like Carnage from Marvel Comics. Uh, I hurt his feelings. And now <laughs> look what you did, Guarcidio. I'm. That's a nice looking guitar there. This is a nice, nice yeah, this is my, this is my custom Dunnable. It looks like uh, Gibson Explorer had sex with Prince's guitar. And Jimmy then does. against, uh, against the will of God, this was birthed. Right. Yes. It's a guitar. Born out of sexual transgression. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's kind of, I imagine that this was created kind of, it's like the end of Alien Resurrection, where it's just like an abomination coming out, but you're like, eh, pretty cool. Not yeah. bad. <laughs> I'd suck that out of an airlock. <laughs> <laughs> well, ball sack's gone. I guess it's over. I guess hell? it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. This was oh, fun. Guasinio, well, thank you for being had. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got me. Let's fucking cover Elton John. Oh yeah, man. We're gonna do it. Absolutely. You know I'm gonna have. Yeah, I'm gonna have a very fun outfit. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when this is uh, when we actually we, when we can actually do shows again. We will be on the same stage together. I, oh, one we day, we got, it's gotta happen. Gotta happen. You know it will. Absolutely. It's gonna be fun. A barbecue, a some kind of fest, let's make it happen. Oh no! Don't want to up my internet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that internet too that Dancy keeps talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he talks about the internet too. Yeah, Second, yeah. is he yeah. talking about this? I think he just means the black market. I don't, I don't know what he means. Internet too. Well, I mean, he, you never. He has weird words for everything. Like he, he loves Planet Parenthood, but he thinks you can buy a baby skull there. So I think he's mixing that up with just yeah. like his local oddity shop. <laughs> yeah, Planet Parenthood, where they have, yeah. where they have candles and bird skulls. <laughs> <laughs> it was good talking to you guys. Do you want me to hear? Do you want me to cut? It was good talking to you guys. Uh, cut. Stab into Christmas. We'll kill your family. Make your dad look lucky.